on Father's Day to hear that deep bass and then those high tenor notes too. What a blessing. Our Father's favorite day. Is this, is this a little loud or is it okay? Okay. Our Father's favorite day. I suppose that when he began to create the universe with the power of his light, because he is unapproachable light, must have been an exciting experience for him. People think that God doesn't get excited, but I know better. The Bible reveals it very clearly. When the prodigal son was coming home, that father was reflecting our Heavenly Father's glory. And that father was so excited that he didn't wait for that boy to get to the front porch. He got up and he ran down the road. All is forgiven. Here he put on the, the signet ring where he had power of attorney over all of his estate. He put on a fancy robe to cover his wretched rags. He, he killed a fatted calf and he had a feast like they'd never had on the ranch. That's the excitement that God had when he started creating. And it just kept going. I mean, I don't know how long he and the word Jesus and the spirit, the breath of life, I don't know how, how long the three of them designed and planned and contemplated it, but they'd been here forever, so I guess your guess is better than mine. But they kept going, and they began touching and speaking. God spoke. His word was there. His breath was there. He began creating. Pretty soon the earth popped into existence. He's got the whole world in his hands. Amen? Amen. I think we should sing that. Amen. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. You can clap. The whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got all the dads. He's got all the dads in his hand. He's got all of the dads in his hand. He's got all of the dads in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hands. Amen. So he went through the six days of creation. I mean, what a time he must have been having. There he's creating. I mean, look at that. How many people can create a big giant fish or a whale? I mean, it's amazing what God was doing. Can you imagine the fun he was having? I'm thinking the monkeys had to be one of his favorite days when he made those monkeys. And, and, and I don't know what scorpions were like before sin came, but I guarantee you scorpions were cool and scorpions were fun. And I can't wait to see what they really were like. Because after Jesus gets done with this place, I'm going to have a bunch of scorpions in my house. Because God made them. Scorpions won't hurt anybody in the new heavens, the new earth. Right? I mean, they got to be good. I, I don't even think they're going to look the way they look right now. But I'm looking forward to that. And then he had day seven where he rested. And he gave them... He gave them Adam and Eve. He made them. Mom and dad, he made them. They weren't mom and dad yet. But he said, multiply and reproduce and fill the earth. God was having fun. That was God's favorite Father's Day. And what's so cool about God is he can have more than one favorite God Father's Day. You get to the DNA. I mean, that was all a part of the creation. You know, scientists, it's taken them 6,000 years to even find out that there was such a thing. And God made it and designed it. It's more complicated, more precise, more fancy and fabulous than any supercomputer you can find. He makes our supercomputers look like rocks laying out on the barren ground. The DNA is amazing. Look at that giraffe. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Look at that look, a long neck. Why would you do that? Because he, ha he has, God likes to have fun. What's that, a gibboon? A, a gibboon or, I think it's called a gibboon. Look at all this. Oh, the seals are awesome. 
You know, you go down to La Jolla Cove in, in, in San Diego. Anybody ever been to La Jolla Cove? Just a few. Just click in La Jolla Cove and follow your street pilot down there. There's, there's at least 100 seals. There's like maybe more than that, but there's 100 of the black seals. And then there's probably 50 or 60 of the big brown California seals. And man, they are fun to watch. Uh, it's, it, I, it just, I can't even imagine what, what fun he was having. Incredible. That, that, that giraffe, do you know they have to have an amazing device in their neck to get the blood to go up to the brain? This pumping chambers and choo -choo, check valves, check valves all the way up. Choo -choo. The, the heart this is one of the most powerful hearts in the world because it has to push this blood up against pressure up to his head. And then when he bends down to get a drink, he has to have a whole other set of valves so that the blood doesn't blow his brain up. Because without those check valves going up, going down now, the pressure would actually destroy his brain. That's incredible how intelligent. Now, now people say that happened over millions of years, that the, that thing evolved. Are you kidding me? You, you, you wouldn't survive evolution if you were a giraffe because every time it would take a while for that valve to evolve. But every time you got a drink, your head would blow up so you couldn't reproduce. <laughs> that happened immediately. He created him with those valves, the valve going up, and the valve to keep it from going down. God's amazing. That's just one little thing. You look at the, the eye of a hummingbird, that ought to give you a reason to pause. Thinking about the eye of the hummingbird, I got that mixed up in there again. And then here's another one of God's favorite dates, favorite Father's Day. When baby Jesus made his entrance, don't you know the fathers, he doesn't wear a coat like us, but don't you know if he did, those buttons were popping. There his son, born in a lowly manger, come to become the servant of all. And that word servant is slave. If you think carrying sin up to the top of Mount Calvary is not slave labor, then you don't understand what sin really is. Jesus came here to be your slave. The word servant is a, is a nice word. But the reality of it is, he came to be your sin bearer. That's slave labor. And the father was delighted about that because of how much he loves you. He wasn't delighted that his son was going to suffer that much. But he was thinking about how much you were going to benefit because of it. Wow. Wow. I imagine more songs have been written, more pictures have been painted, more stories have been told about baby Jesus in Bethlehem than, than any other story in the history of the world. It's amazing. I wasn't going to put this one in here because this is a strange one. I don't, I, 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 I mean, I talked to God about this. I talked to him about these favorite Father's Days that he's experienced. And, 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 and God doesn't really like this that much. Because he put your sin and my sin on Jesus. He had to pull back his protection so that the Roman soldiers could beat on Jesus, could spit on him and, and whip him. And no father is going to enjoy that. None. But I put it up there because even though it may not be his favorite Father's Day, it's, it's one of his special Father's Days. Because of what he gave to his sons and daughters. It's amazing that he would do that for you and me. And I just praise God for this day. Now this was a favorite Father's Day. I talked to him about these and I know he liked this one. The father really enjoyed this one because he got to be in on this one. Romans says that God the Father raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Hey, he had some angels involved there. They, they, they touched that stone and it flew away like it was a feather. The Greek actually says that the stone flew away, not just rolled away. It was actually picked up and tossed away. And I know that God enjoyed doing that. God the Father. Amen? Wow. I mean, I don't think he likes to pick on humans, but I think he thoroughly enjoyed scaring those Roman soldiers out of their wits. Now, 
He was trying to save them at the same time because he loved them just as much as he loves you or me. But they fell trembling as dead men. Now these were the roughest, toughest soldiers in the Roman army, the Praetorian Guard. Four troops of four, 16, and wow. They didn't even have a chance because Jesus was alive. The favorite Father's Day. And, and you know, to check if you're, whether you're a dad or a mom or just as long as you're a human being, to check yourself and see whether or not you're in, in any kind of harmony with the creator of the universe, ask yourself, is this your favorite day? Is this one of your favorite days? Was creation, is creation one of your favorite days? Well, I know people who wish they'd never been born, and so they couldn't say, yeah, creation was my favorite day. I know there's people that wish they'd never been born. I used to be one of those. My dad and my stepdad were so crazy and so wild in sin that life was really miserable, very miserable. It was more miserable for my poor mom, but it was pretty miserable for me too. And I used to hate my dad. And I hated my stepdad even more. And when I played football... The way I was able to succeed was I would focus on that hate that I had from my dad and my stepdad. And I would just channel it over against the person I was playing against. And I played that way. I didn't like football. I didn't even like football. But it was a way that I could express my hate and anger. And I am so thankful That Jesus Christ is real. I mean, he took that stinger right out of me. He took that hate right out of me. And I remember the last few times, the last few years, I'd go to see my, my dear dad. He died when he was 63. And I remember I'd go and I'd witness to him. And I'd ask him to give his life to Jesus. And he'd say, I, I'm doing that the best I can. I read my Bible every day. I say my prayers every day. He'd quit drinking. He'd quit cussing. He'd quit living wild. And he was a Christian. But I remember every time when I'd say it was time to go, I'd say, hey, can I pray? Can we pray together? Can I pray for you? And I'd start praying, and he would just weep. He would just weep. Because I know he was really sorry for all the ugly things he had done. And he would just weep. And of course, I'd weep too. <laughs> and then we'd hug. And as he was dying, I, I didn't get to be there. We were on the road on the way there. But as he was dying, he died saying the Lord's Prayer. And uh, whew, my dear dad, I always called him daddy. And uh, all I remember, I don't remember the ugly stuff. You know, even if the ugly stuff tries to poke in there, and that's usually the devil. Even if the ugly stuff tries to raise up in there, the Holy Spirit just, just burns it. But I just remember the beautiful things he did. He let me, he taught me to drive a farm tractor. He let me sit on his lap. We'd drive the farm tractor. He killed a big old bad snake one day because he didn't want, him to, didn't want me to be scared. There in our backyard on the farm. Uh, I remember he took us camping one time. And, uh, I mean, I was like six years old. They were already divorced, him and my mom. We went camping, and, man, he did one of the coolest things I had ever seen. I'd never seen this. He took a bucket, several buckets of sand, and he filled them with gasoline, and they burned all night long. I mean, he was, as far as I was concerned, he was 
one of the smartest people I ever knew simply from that one thing that he did. A little six-year-old thinks that's pretty intense, you know. And he lit that, and I thought, wow, that thing burned, and it burned. I kept waking up during the night, and it was still burning to keep, keep bad animals away or whatever. And then I remember some good things he always did. And that's what we need to, that's what we need to concentrate on. That's what we need to pray for. I know there's some folks here that have been hurt, maybe even, maybe even worse than me, by your dad or your grandparent or, or, or a mom or, or somebody. But we need to concentrate on that which is holy and pure and, and virtuous as in Philippians 4. You, you focus on that and you're focusing on Jesus because he is the word. See, if you focus on the word, the word will heal you. By beholding, we are changed. 2 Corinthians 3.18. And so Jesus was alive. That was a great day. I think every time a sinner comes to Jesus is the Father's favorite day. And so I know that every day, at least every day since I gave my life to Jesus, has been his favorite day because I give my life to Jesus every day. So that makes his day. One of his favorites. You know, I happen to believe that I've caused God some pain. I happen to believe that the, some of the things I've done and said has, has offended him, has caused him serious pain. I have somebody say, how can you hurt God? Well, I'll tell you what, God hurts. God suffers. Sin hurts God. And if you want to know how much it hurts God, all you got to do is think about the cross. That's what sin does to God because Jesus is God. So I know that I've hurt him. I've, I've caused him a lot of pain and, and sorrow. But I know that every day I get to bring him joy. Simply by giving my life to Jesus. I get to bring him joy. <laughs> he, I don't know if he jumps, but I guarantee if he does, he jumps real high. Every day. Because there's at least one sinner that I know of that's given his life to Jesus every day. That's awesome. And you know, when, when, you, bring, when you bring some soul who's never given their life to Jesus, when you, when you let the Holy Spirit use you to bring that soul to Jesus, God's not the only one jumping. The whole host, all the angels start jumping on that day. Because Jesus said, they all rejoice when one sinner comes. That first time. Oh, yeah. Our Father's favorite day. This is a big one. Can you imagine? Wow. There's one up there. There's an angel that's got a little baby bringing it to his mama. I'm going to be standing next to one of those. I'm going to be standing next to one of those. Some of you are too. Esper's mom and dad, they lost their first baby. Little girl. I think she was three months old. One month old. That's a heartbreak. That's a, that's a rip in the soul. Some of you have lost children when they were 15 or 16 or 10 or 20. Or, you know, it's just, it's just, it's never right when a mom or a dad loses a child. I don't care if they're 60. If your child dies before you do, it's a heartbreaking, heart-ripping, terrible thing. But on this day, the Lord is throwing down. He's coming. And when he calls, wake up to all who have died in the hope of his love. Wow. What a day that's going to be. Uh, now, this is a thousand years later. See, that day, boom. Man, we're flying high. We spend a thousand years, boom, we're coming back. Amen. That's a big day. Favorite day. Now, I want to tell you something. During that thousand years, there's going to be a whole bunch of pain. There's going to be a whole bunch of crying and weeping. Because those who, who, who die or live 
trusting in his love or, or accepting his love are going to be in heaven for a thousand years and we're going to be looking at all the record books wondering why grandpa wasn't there, why Aunt, Aunt Sylvia wasn't there, or why my best buddy in high school wasn't there. We're going to find out that they weren't there because they rejected the love of the Creator and there's going to be some weeping going on. There's going to be some sorrow going on during that thousand years. And at the end of the thousand years when we come down, the host of all the wicked, all those who've rejected the love of God, that's what it takes to be wicked. That's all it takes. All it takes to be wicked is to reject the love of God. And all it takes to be righteous is to accept the love of God. It's that easy. Once you open your heart and accept the love of God, which is Jesus Christ, Amen. into your life, it just gets better from then on out. That's how easy it is. Just say, yes, Jesus. Boom. You're accepting the love of God. So when this city comes down, all the wicked, all those who've rejected the love of God, and you can do that without even ever heard the name of Jesus. If you're living over in a jungle somewhere, like Abraham was down in the Fertile Crescent, and it was probably tropical, well, Abraham started hearing these things from the Spirit. And he started opening his heart to it. And as soon as he did, he was classified, saved by faith. Boom. He hadn't even done anything yet. Just like the thief on the cross. Thief on the cross lived like a jerk his whole life, probably, most of his, at least his adult life. He deserved to, he was being punished for his crime. But he heard the Spirit voice, he heard the Spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit, and he, started, he opened his heart a little bit, and boom, he, his, he put his trust in the Savior that was dying right next to him. What kind of Savior is that? What kind of Savior can't even protect himself? I mean, I know the devil was telling him that. But he chose to listen to the voice of the Spirit. And the Spirit said, this is Messiah. And even though it doesn't look right, he's the Savior. You better trust him. And he chose to listen to that sweet, still, small voice of the Spirit. And he was saved by faith immediately. He couldn't even, he couldn't even do anything. He didn't do anything because he couldn't do anything. All he could do is say, save me. Boom. Done. So if you walk out of here today, Without salvation, it's simply because you didn't want it, because it is here in Jesus. So this is a big day for God. He's been working on this place. He's been working on this building, for a, this city, for a long time. Abraham was looking for it. Hebrews said Abraham was looking for a city whose builder was God. God was already working on it for you before you were even born. He's, he's, he's got a place for you. That's a big day for the Father. That's a big, huge, happy Father's Day. Man, the lion is going to lie down with the lamb. I'm going to have my own personal lion. And I've already had sheep, so I know I'm going to have sheep. I raised, my brother and I raised a few sheep. They're about as helpless and defenseless and ignorant as a creature can be. But in heaven, they will be smart. Sheep will be smart in heaven. <laughs> Just like humans. We're helpless and de defenseless too. But with Jesus, we're lions. Amen? Amen. In fact, in Psalms, it says, it says uh, the righteous are as bold as lions. So anyway, this is a big day for God. When the earth is made new, after the new Jerusalem lands, boom, the whole surface of the earth, whoosh, vaporized. And you know what? Don't count on the earth being the same size that it is right now. You know how big Jupiter is? Jupiter's huge. Uh, one, of the, one of the comets broke up. The scientists said comets would never hit planets. They, they said that for many years. Therefore, they said the Bible's a joke because that's not going to happen. Things from space aren't going to hit the earth. And, and so in 94, that comet broke up into 21 pieces and it hit Jupiter. And one of the pieces that hit Jupiter made a crater three times as big as the earth. I wouldn't doubt it if the earth was going to be as big as Jupiter when he gets done. Well, the, this, people always say, how can this city fit on the earth? Look how big that thing is, man. It's, 
1,600 miles high. How can that be on the earth? That can't be on. No, 1,600. Yeah, it is miles. 1,600 miles high. How can that can't be on the earth? It'd stick up into outer space. Well, not if you're Jupiter. <laughs> See, we, we think we're so smart. All will be well. Are you kidding me? You think this is not going to be a big day for the Father? For the Son and for the Spirit? He wants you there. He wants me there. Because He is love. And there'll be no more night. No more. I'm going to give Fred this yellow mic, number one. No more night. The timeless theme, earth and heaven will pass away. It's not a dream, God will make all things new that day. Gone is the curse from which I stumbled and fell. Evil is banished, and all is well. And no more night, no more pain, no more tears, never crying again. Praise to the great I am we will live in the light of the risen land see all around now the nations bow down to sing the only sound is the praises to Christ our King. Slowly the names from the book are read. I know the King, and there's no need to dread. There will be no more night, no more pain, no more tears, never crying again. Praises to the great I am, we will live in the light of the risen Lamb. See over there, it's a mansion prepared for me, where I will live with my Savior eternally. No more night, no No one crying again. Praises to the great I am. We will live in the light of the risen land. We will live in the light of the
Amen. There we go. Who are you walking with this very day? I think this is so beautiful. This little boy, you, you might have been able to see it, but his left foot is exactly the same as his daddy's. His hands are in his pockets. And you know, when they're little, us dads don't realize it, but little kids are just watching everything. They're little sponges. And by the time you become a grandpa, you're smart enough to be a, a dad. It takes about that long for some of us. So it's so important to have Jesus to help to smooth off those rough spots in our parenting and the way we do things. I know that most, most young women, they... They grow up thinking of the day their daddy's going to give them away at the wedding. There's a dad giving away his little girl. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, I remember when Jose walked Esper down the aisle. I was there. I was so excited I couldn't hardly stay in my shoes. Just blast off right through the church. But I know he was sad because he said, man, I'm giving my precious little girl to this. Because <laughs> you know, I don't care how good you are, you're, you're almost never good enough for a daddy's daughter. But that's a special time. Beautiful. Uh, you know... Uh, God intended everything to be perfect down here. He did everything he could to make sure it would be. And our first dad messed it up. Eve it wasn't the sin of Eve. The Bible makes it very clear that it was not the sin of Eve that brought the curse. But it was the willful sin of Adam. Eve was deceived. Adam did it willfully that brought the curse. Well, I know that we have a second Adam. His name is Jesus. And, and it actually in Isaiah, he refers Jesus not only as the Prince of Peace, the Wonderful Counselor, but he also refers to Jesus as the Everlasting Father. So we have the Father of Jesus as a Father, and we have Jesus as a Father. I mean, God has doubled up because he knows what we've lost. And he wants to make it right. That's the Father we have in heaven. And, and you know they're walking there on the beach. And there's three, you can't see them, but there's three footprints going down that beach. But the, but the question is, who are you walking with? If you're walking with Jesus, there's one set of footprints. Because he is... He is the perfect dad. He is the perfect big brother. He's the perfect Lord. He's the perfect servant. He's the perfect best friend. He's the perfect perfect. Amen. He is a full reflection of the Father. And that's the kind of dad I still need. My favorite pictures when my boys were growing up was when they were on my shoulders and I'm walking around with them on my shoulders. They got so big I couldn't do that anymore. But that's, those were some of my favorite pictures. And I know that our father's favorite, favorite pictures is this one. When you're on top of his shoulders. When he's lifted you up out of the pit of sin and he puts you right on top of his shoulders and he carries you for eternity. This is his favorite picture right here. Because a picture is worth a thousand words. This is God's message right here. He wants to carry you. And he can. The big question is, will you let him? Will you say yes, Jesus? As we pray, as we close, if you came in here today 
and you weren't on top of his shoulders and you weren't riding on Jesus, if he wasn't carrying you, if you hadn't, if you hadn't given your life to Jesus this morning, if you didn't give your life to Jesus yesterday and you think you can do this on your own, I beg you to forget that and go with this. And as, as we pray, just where you're at, just softly say, yes, Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for giving us Jesus. And our answer, our reply is yes. Yes to Jesus, Father, today and forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. As we close, I invite you to take your hymnal to 615. I didn't tell Lauren about this because I didn't know about it until a few minutes ago because one of our members requested that we sing 615 and I can't turn down a request for a song. So here we go. Rise up, O church of God, 615, 615. And it used to be rise up, O men of God, but they changed it to church of God. But it starts with rise up, O men of God. We'll sing this song. I invite you to stand as we sing and pray, pray for your dads. Pray for the men in your life that God will raise them up to be the men of God that he's designed and called them to be. Sing. Rise up, O men of God, His kingdom tarries long. Bring in the day of brotherhood and in the night of wrong. Let women all rise up, have done with lesser heart and soul and mind and strength to serve the King of Kings. Rise up, courageous youth, the church for you doth wait. Her strength unequal to her task, rise up and make her great. Lift high the cross of Christ, tread where his feet have trod. Disciples of the Son of Man, rise up, O Church of God. And the church says, Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you as you go with Jesus. See you here, there, or in the air, because he is coming back.